title, Israel, and we're going to go through basically the top 10 Christian scandals. And these are probably something that will shock you. Names that you uh, heard about that are extremely popular, but you didn't know that they've done these horrendous acts. Some of them you've heard just a little bit, but you didn't know how dirty it was or how deep the level is. And I'm going to basically uh, show the audience some shocking things that are the top 10 that they probably didn't know about. Some of these are a full record, and others, believe it or not, happened within a one-year span. A couple of them in a one-year span, which is shocking to me. So I, it shows how much the devil is really working his system. We're going to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 5, and that will be the passage for tonight's teachings. All right, now y'all take guesses on who are the top 10. Let's start out with number 10, number 10. So number 10, we will start out with Carl Lentz. Carl Lentz. For some people who don't know about Carl Lentz, he's the famous Hillsong pastor. Remember, Hillsong is a chain, so he's one of their pastors. Carl Lentz, he's very famous for his connections uh, and conversion of Justin Bieber, or supposedly the uh, conversion of Justin Bieber. I don't know about that, but that's between him and God. And then all the other big shot celebrities who attended his church services. So he was probably the A-list in Hillsong's pastor list. But in this article title, he is a victim of his own church. Carl Lentz, Ranin Karim, and Hillsong's unfurling scandal. And this is in the Vanity Fair magazine, November 17th, 2020. This happened recently. So this was November of 2020. The scandal is that he cheated on his wife, which is why it's number 10. And you might say, well, that's bad enough. Well, you don't know what worse is, so just wait and see. So Carl Lentz, he cheated on his wife, and he even admitted to the woman, uh, Ranin Karim, that he has a wife. But in spite of that, he, uh, he still begged to have connections with her, hook up with her. And they even fell a point of uh, falling in love with each other, which is pretty bad. And then finally, uh, whoever found out first, uh, I bet you it's the wife, right? Wife, wife always looks at everything. Amen. Wife found, yeah, amen, brother. So uh, wife found out, and then uh, it became an ugly scandal. And she even held a, a bigger disdain for Christianity. And I believe, I could be wrong, but from what, from some rumors I've heard, she has a Muslim background. So it gives, uh, she now has a greater disdain toward Christianity. And Hillsong has a right to be criticized severely because it's not just Carl Lenz's sin, but the title of the article, she said he is a victim of his own church. Because Lenz poured out a whole bunch of emotions during their time, cheating time together. And he was like frustrated with the church, the organization, the machinery, and some slippery things that was going on behind the scenes probably. So because of that, she saw, it, she saw him as a victim more than a, a messed up person, a corrupt person. She saw him more as a victim because the real uh, abuser... The real machine, the real evil, was the Hillsong system. But uh, we'll find out a little bit more later on on that one, okay? The second one, number nine, number nine, and big names, all right, Paula White. For some of you who didn't know, this was years ago. That's why you didn't know about that. But here's another big name, which is bigger than her, because they did it together. Or you say, Benny Hinn. So supposedly, Benny Hinn and Paula White, so it's supposedly because it can only be confirmed from the news source from what they investigated. But uh, there's no 100% evidence for that one yet. However, uh, you got to realize there were some things that were very fishy, and I personally believe it did happen. So at Rome, they were seen coming out of the hotel holding hands together. So that's real plain suspicion, number one. Number two, Benny Hinn went through a divorce after that with his wife. But then uh, he confessed and repaired the marriage. 
And then Paula White herself was going through a divorce and family issues. So I, I don't know. You just be the judge of that yourself. The title is from the Orlando Sentinel. Orlando Sentinel, title of their article. Book publisher says tele-evangelist Benny Hinn violated morality clause. And this is February 17, 2011. But actually, the article goes on to say that uh, Benny Hinn basically admitted that the incident happened. So when they said about the incident, I don't know too much if he like blatantly confessed, I did it with her, or but he basically confessed the, uh, that he was inappropriate, that the inappropriate things were going on with him and her. So it was pretty, pretty bad. So that was a huge issue that happened years ago. All right, this one is a no-brainer. So these are common things that became very infamous throughout history now. The other, one, the other person's name is, some of you have, may have heard this couple, Jim and Tammy Baker. So Now, I don't know if you remember, this was a guy that basically, during the coronavirus incident, was trying to sell the silver solution medicine, and then the secular world uh, crucified him, and some secular groups tried to sue him for that one. But basically, the title of the article is from the History Channel. October 4th, 1988, tele-evangelist Jim Baker is indicted on federal charges. Now, why is that? It's because the federal charge, we, we can tell the sexual scandal was his former church secretary, Jessica Hahn. But it's not just that. For some of you who don't know about Jim Baker, he's so famous because, I don't know if you heard of this organization. He's the founder or the leader of Praise the Lord Ministries. Now, I don't know if you knew this, but during the early 2000s, Praise the Lord Ministries, the largest Christian television network was Trinity Broadcasting Network during the 90s and the early 2000s. And then Praise the Lord Network was constantly on. That was probably the most famous uh, show during uh, TBN, more so than Joel Osteen and Benny Hinn's own ch channels. So he was like the leader of that one, but he was caught with the scandal. But why is it higher than Carl Lentz? The reason why is because it's not just his sexual incident with Jessica Hahn, federal charges of mail and wire fraud, and of conspiring to defraud the public. So that was even worse. Now, these are big names you got to understand so far. Let me give you another big name. This is recorded in the history books. This person... All right, Jimmy Swagger. Jimmy Swagger. Now, Jimmy Swagger, for some of you who d don't know, he was a famous charismatic pastor during the 80s as well, during the 80s. Famous pastor. Him and Jim Baker just went hand to hand. But what happened was that he went out with prostitutes. And the title of the article is from AP News. Prostitutes says Swagger had sex with her, but... This is what made him worse than Jim Baker is this. Is that when the Baker incident came out, Swagger criticized and rebuked Baker. And then the very same year or practically the next year within the same timeline, Swagger incidents came out. So it's a famous scene in news where he cried and said, I have sinned against you, my Lord. But then there's a lot of comments there that says he's very good at putting on a show. Because charismatics are very good in being sensational. Mm -hmm. So me, I'm not going to judge him, and probably he did confess, but that's another thing that I don't overlook either. Perhaps it was a show. I don't know. But the point is, what makes him worse is, one, the hypocrisy. But second, this is pretty disturbing, is that I'm not going to read this word for word, but basically the prostitute claimed that Swaggart, when... He was doing uh, sexual intercourse with her. He wanted her underage daughter, like very, very young, to watch the scenery. So that was just totally messed up. That was just really wicked. So there's that one. Here's the other one, number six. Now, this is just shocking. These are huge names you got to understand. Ted Haggard. Ted Haggard. Okay, why is he famous? Because... For some of you who don't know, Ted Haggard, he's the president of the National 
association of evangelicals. So the dominant mega churches of today are evangelical churches. I don't know if you knew that. That's why I said my number one enemy, for some of you who don't remember, my number one enemy in uh, rebuking is actually not the globalists, but it's actually the evangelical churches or otherwise called neo-evangelical churches. Why is that? Because they compromised and they have huge numbers. So that's why they made a huge influence around our world and politics and even fellow Christians because of their power. But Ted Haggard, he's the president of the National Association of Evangelicals. Okay, what makes him worse than the previous three? Well, it was uh, two sexual scandals. And you might go, well, it's not as bad as Swaggart, right? Well, the thing is, is the uh, title of the CNN article, Disgraced Pastor Haggard Admits Second Relationship, Second Time with what? With man. Homosexuality, sodomite. So here's this pastor preaching, and then the sodomite actually called him out. Uh, I could be wrong, but from some rumors that called him out in the middle while he was preaching, and then pointed out point blank that he and I had a relationship. Uh, that was really, really bad. That was really, really bad. Now, number, it gets worse, okay? It gets worse. Number five. Now, you wouldn't believe this number five. Number five is Jerry Falwell, Jr. That's right, the one who's supposed to be in charge of Liberty University. Now, remember, Liberty University is very strong concerning about uh, the conservative movement or in Christian education system. So a lot of the liberal universities, the first thing in their mind concerned about Christian university or the top would be Liberty University. But Jerry Falwell Jr., now you might go, what makes him even worse? Now, you know when this happened? This actually happened uh, within last year. This happened within last year, so it's pretty, pretty bad. So it's very, very recent. It's very, very recent. Now, look at this one, already back to back. Already back to back. So this should be scary to ministers or people involved in the ministry then. We live in a digital age, don't we? We live at a time of uh, where uh, corruption is increasing. All right. But anyway, Jerry Falwell Jr., this is, this is really messed up. All right. This is by Reuters. Title of their article, Business Partner of Falwell's Says Affair with Evangelical Power Couple Spanned Seven Years. Wait, what does that mean in the title? Okay, so he's, he started when he was 20, so it's a he with Falwell, but basically he had uh, re sexual relations with his wife, Falwell Jr. just liked to watch. That is just, this is just way out, like, I mean, it just puts a cold chill in your spine, and you go, what in the world's going on? So Liberty University definitely took action about this, because this was not a good testimony to them. So uh, thankfully, there are Christian organizations who do that, actually. And I think Haggard, he did uh, confess in front of even the liberal news media his sin, and then publicly confessed it. So at least uh, some Christians have a conscience about that. Or some Christians uh, even do good measures at least to do that much. But that was re <laughs> really messed up. And this is recently, you got to understand, okay? All right, here's, not, here's something that's worse than Falwell. Okay, it just gets darker as we, as we get, go deeper and deeper. And this is only five years ago, okay? I don't know if some of you knew this guy's name, but he's famous, and I use some of his illustrations for my sermons. His book, he takes animal characters. Uh, I remember that uh, in the preacher's library, my dad actually has a huge volumes, and these are animal characters. And then he does a brilliant job where he takes every moral character, like responsibility, trust, uh, obedience, and then applies these morals with each animal. And what, however the animal practices responsibility, we Christians can learn from that. But he does probably even more things than that one. But his name is Bill Gothard. Bill Gothard. 
So when I heard about that, I was really disturbed. I really didn't know about that. That really disturbed me. Now, why is he worse than Falwell? So title of the article from the Chicago. Let me move. That way people can see top three, right? All right. Title from the Chicago Mag, The Cult Next Door. That's not a good testimony for a title. June 20th, 2016. All right, what makes him worse? What makes him worse is from the article, it says, Gothard stepped down after an internal probe. But since, uh, since then, 18, 18 former staffers, interns, and volunteers have joined in a lawsuit accusing him of, quote, sexually, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and or psychologically abusing them. In many cases, the plaintiffs were underage at the time and had been recruited to work for the organization by Gothard himself. The suit also takes on IBLP, accusing it of initially covering up Gothard's actions which the plaintiffs claim took place over the course of several decades. Several decades. And it's been, uh, some people, some Christians joked about Bill Gothard having a harem because his, staff, his staffers were all uh, pretty girls and a lot of them consisted of underage women. So there was a joke going around the Christian community and that's, but then little did they know it was really the case. It's not a good testimony. And so that's what makes him worse because it's 18 right here. And this has been going on for decades. Now, if you think that's bad enough, it just gets worse. So th number three, perhaps the most famous recently, Ravi Zacharias. How many of you have heard about that scandal? It, look at this, folks. Look at the year here. Do you see this? This should be a, a time where Christians should be more on the alert. 2020. All right, Ravi Zacharias, title of the CNN article. Famed evangelist Ravi Zacharias engaged in sexual misconduct, his ministry says. What way? This guy, okay, this really disgusted me because Zacharias is a famous apologist that everybody looked up to. Now, remember I gave you a warning about him and a lot of people online got mad at me and that's okay, it's because they haven't grown spiritually. They haven't been in the ministry for a while. Amen. Or those who claim to be in the ministry, they're just used to compromising and they're not in right doctrine. Mm -hmm. But Ravi Zacharias, I warned you about him that, look, there, I gave him credit to whom credit's due. I said I thank God for him. He's done a lot of great work. But I warned you that his issue that I don't like about him is that he's dishonest. He's slippery. Yeah. He's conniving. He tries to please both sides so that no side can condemn him. And he's so good with that. Why? Because he's good with apologetics. So he has a way with words. That's why he got off of this for, for all, the, all those years until the day he died. Why? He was good with words. And that makes me extremely angry. That makes me, I'm even more angry at him than now. I should have exposed him even more. But me, I'm, I'm giving credit to him as credit's due. I don't believe in like making myself look like a fool by uh, posting tons of video on one individual. So I have limitations, I have grace, but this guy, I feel like I should have condemned him even more. This guy is disgusting. This guy makes me angry. I mean, he's, he's getting what he deserves. If he is, if he is saved, he's getting what he deserves at the judgment seat of Christ. And I don't want to be in his shoes. This is from the article, CNN. The law firm said it employed a private investigations firm that included former federal law enforcement officers. More than 50 people were interviewed, including more than a dozen massage therapists according to the report. A digital forensics firm examined four cell phones. This guy is conniving, sneaky, way with words. A digital forensics firm examined four cell phones and a laptop used by Zacharias. Evidence was uncovered of text and email based relationships with women who are not his wife, along with more than, more than, 200 photos of women 
the report said. And these were women that he manipulated, abused, and controlled. Basically raped. Let's just be honest. It's rape. Several women accused Zacharias of using ministry funds to give them financial support, eliciting personal information about their lives and employing religious, employing, this is what makes me angry, employing religious language during encounters, according to the report. You know why? He has this existential garbage of speaking that he can get away with it. That guy's a snake. I hate that. That makes me extremely angry. Amen, How dare you use the gift God has given to you to abuse your sinful nature? You know what makes me even more angry? That's why I put him at number three. You know what makes me even more man angry? I don't know who I'm more angry. Ravi Zacharias or the ministry leaders who get mad at me for posting this video and empathize with them. Title of the article from Religion News Service, Ministry Leaders Rush to empathize with Ravi Zacharias is beyond alarming. You know why? They were all saying that, look, uh, it could have happened to me too. So what in the world? Are you stupid, man? Are you stupid, man? I mean, how dare you say it could happen to the best of us, so we shouldn't be so judgmental. And hard. Are you stupid? Why don't you shut up? Get off the ministry, man. Could happen to you. I don't want you as my pastor. Amen. Now, look. Let's be honest, and I'm going to actually uh, shed a little grace here because we cannot think we're better than any of these people. That's, right. That's very dangerous to also think about. I'm not saying I'm better than these guys. Your fleshly nature, you have no idea. you got to realize this. This is common sense. Uh, a person who was researching these men gave a very good question. you got to think about that all these men... All these people did not start out that I'm going to join the ministry so that I can sexually take advantage of people. All these people started out with a good heart for the Lord. I want to help people. I want to rescue people. But see, in the middle of their spiritual walk, the devil gets them somewhere. Yeah. And then gets them to mess up. Now, I would like to hear John MacArthur, who's been with meetings with Ravi Zacharias and Sproul and those idiots who've been together with Ravi, Ravi Zacharias, call him a saved Christian. See if he's saved or not in their lordship salvation heresy. This is proof a saved Christian can commit the worst kinds of sins. Now, I, uh, John MacArthur, you have the guts. I challenge you and Sproul and these Calvinist scholars and to start publicly saying yeah. that Ravi Zacharias, he's a saved brother in Christ and it can happen to any of us. Then you're the greatest hypocrite ever. Then you're saying that he saved with these sexual scandals that lost unsaved liberals who drink, smoke, dance, fornicate, and do sodomy wouldn't even do the same thing that Zacharias would do. Yeah. So Christians should be careful. See, so I understand that, but the way that these pastors talk, like we, sh like we shouldn't uh, cast judgment and it could happen to the best of us, you better shut up, man. He got what he deserved. People should be angry against this guy for what he did. Uh, the art it's a shame here. The article reads here, which is a shame, it is deeply troubling to see so many men, especially in ministry leadership, find a more immediate connection with the abuser rather than the abused. That's a shameful testimony in this news source. I'm not, you think it can get worse than this? All right. Now, some of you would know this by now because this has been a, a long time in waiting. But uh, Brian uh, Houston, is that right, his last name? All right, Brian Houston. Why is he number two? This is the, the famous guy who's in charge of Hillsong. All right, the guy who started the chain, the guy who has all the power, he started this corrupt machinery that gave birth to a victim like this one. That's why he's number two. Why? Because, because of him, he gets another guy coming out from his ministry like that. And not just him, probably even more. That's why this is a this hill song is a dangerous machine. This, this system should be exposed. This system should be rebuked. It's a worldly, uh, and, I, uh, and people make fun of me that contemporary music does not give a sensual atmosphere. Huh. Wow. 
You wonder why Hillsong, they always sing gay? Come on. They always have to sing real gay? Because it on. feeds the sensual emotions. There you go. All right, then. We'll we'll have to have Brother Jonathan join the Hillsong concert, jumping up and down. I think he'll he'll get them in shape after that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, the New York Post. All right, this is very disturbing because Hillsong. It's not, uh, I'll tell you all the incidents. This is scandal after scandal after scandal in Hillsong. That makes it bad. That's why I put it as number two. The New York Post title of their article: Tithe Money. Funded Hillsong pastors luxury lifestyles. Former members. Not just one, a number of Hillsong pastors. I don't know if you heard about Carl Lentz. He sold his home for about uh, nearly $2 million or something like that. So you got to realize this in New Jersey, I think. So I'm not talking about San Jose, California, all right, where you get a run down, beat down house and you can sell it for like half a mil or $1 million. I'm talking about like New Jersey, man. I think that's the location, but he had a, a 1.5 or $2 million house, and tithe money could have contributed to that. Because they have a thing, what they call, uh, what they mention about these cards, uh, but I'm not going to get into that. But you can research these articles and read them yourselves. But they mention about this certain card that the pastors receive. And then through these cards, they're able to spend to their own benefit, so to speak. That's why this pastor here, when he's using the church credit card, and the treasury people know this, and we all have eyewitnesses keeping an eye on each other. Yeah. When I use a church credit card, I always report. When there's a person here using the church credit card, guess what? You can't get away with it. You're in the report system, and all of us are going to know about it. Right. So you can't buy that big fancy Rolex watch, okay, before the blowout, all right? You're not going to get away with that. <clears throat> now at, uh, at Vanity Fair magazine, title of their article, Hillsong Church Faces New Allegations of Abusive Behavior. Because ever since Lentz got fired, people started to take advantage and speak out. They felt more brave to speak out now. It says here, Carl Lentz firing from the mega church has set off a flood of comments from previous members about their experiences. December 23rd, 2020 by Dan Adler. This is by the New York Post, title of their article. It's a cult. Ex Hillsong members claim church demanded, quote, slave labor. That's a, that's a machine. And guess what? IFB churches are guilty of that too. I get suspicious when there are pastors who have like a, a slavery system, demand un, um, undying loyalty, yeah. and then uh, makes the uh, slaves the labors because that gives too much power and gives too much trust for the members to their pastor. That's dangerous. That happens with IFB churches, actually. It's pretty bad. This one, this was a couple years ago. And what's really sad is this video from 60 Minutes Australia, they ended with a hopeful tone that hopefully that this incident that you suffered, that you'll seek justice, but it's been years now. Maybe because Brian Houston and his organization is too powerful. But title of the article of this YouTube video from 60 Minutes Australia, Victim of Hillsong Church, Founder's Father says childhood was destroyed by sexual abuse. Why? That because the founder's father molested the child. And you know what Brian Houston did? Didn't report. Knew about it? Didn't report. I don't, uh, his reasons were, well, because the victim did not want it to be reported. That was his excuse. But it doesn't uh, change the fact that there's uh, what the legal system talked about, a conflict of interest. Yeah. And they mentioned that it doesn't change that fact. There's a legal obligation and duty. And by the way, a lot of victims, some of you don't know this, a lot of victims, they like to keep it to themselves. Yeah. I'm not saying that uh, we can force people out of their abusive homes and et cetera, but we do have a right we do have a right and a duty where if some if there's a crime that happens in the church, man, that's got to be taken care of immediately. Yes. All right. 
Now, the thing is this, is that, uh, so you can't just get away by just saying, oh, he's not a pastor anymore. Th then where's the justice? How does he get punishment for that? S but it's not just that father incident. There's so many other scandals that came out. And guess what? He's still getting away with it. And guess what? The liberal news media, while they're exposing him for that one, they're tying him to other Christian churches. Like, so this is the benefit of 501c3 churches and et cetera, where they don't have to ta pay taxes and et cetera. That'll give more justification for the left-wingers to take more control of churches perhaps, right? Why? So we can protect the people from scandals and uh, hunters like these guys, these evil pastors. See what Satan's setting up? Something dangerous, perhaps. Well, but that's not the worst. Number one. All right. Here comes the big drum roll thing here. Number one, and you might be surprised, all right? Some people might think, well, you're so mean and you're so cruel that... Uh, you know, that you point out these Christian pastors who are better than you and who've done great things for the Lord. It's not your place to judge. Well, you know, you might be surprised to I might put as number one, the independent, fundamental Baptist churches. The independent, fundamental Baptist churches. And guess what? We are independent, fundamental Baptists. But the distinction from us with the typical independent fundamental Baptist churches is that we study more doctrine, right? Amen. We study more doctrine. That's why we titled our channel Real Bible Believers. Because everybody's calling themselves a Bible believer in the independent fundamental Baptist movement, but they hardly know doctrine. And not only that, cults are calling themselves Bible believers. Seventh-day Adventists, Charismatics. That's why we titled our channel Real Bible Believers. That's the thing. But the thing is, is that uh, with independent fundamental Baptist churches, and I'm not saying that we're the only one. Obviously, if you look at our church directory, there's thousands of Bible believers who are like us. And then scores of churches that we can recommend you to throughout the world. But obviously, we're a minority. And God's people are always a minority. If we're a majority like Hillsong, then I think that I'd be worried, okay? <laughs> But just so as not to scare other people, we're not like a weird little cult, all right? So here's the thing is that here's the title of the article, and this is from Christianity Today, their article. And it's shame the independent fundamental Baptist movement. Title of their article, hundreds, literally hundreds, accuse independent Baptist pastors of abuse. Hundreds. More than... All right, now let me read you something here. It says here, from Connecticut, uh, from Connecticut to California, the stories are tragically similar. A music minister molested a 15-year-old girl in North Carolina and moved to another church in Florida. The Star-Telegram wrote. Wait, th doesn't this sound like uh, the Catholic... The Catholic scandal where they moved their priests from one location to another, that's a shame for independent fundamental Baptist churches to do that. That's a shame. Another girl's parents stood in front of their Connecticut congregation to acknowledge their daughter's sin after she was abused by her youth pastor, beginning at 16. This year, four women accused a pastor in California of covering up sexual misconduct and shielding the abusers over almost 25 years. In all, 168 leaders, including some of the most prominent pastors among the group's thousands of U.S. congregations faced abused accusations over incidents spanning from the 1970s to present day. More than 130 of them have been found guilty of rape, kidnapping, sexual assault, and a litany of other crimes, with most victims being children and teens. Like Bill Gothard. But they just add the numbers way more. Uh, let's keep reading here. According to a database compiled by the Star-Telegram, dozens of abusive pastors had multiple victims. 
One raped 11 girls in his congregation, and several had abused children as young as seven years old. Shelton Smith, editor of The Sword of the Lord, big name, IFB. He said this, the fact that such abuse occurs anywhere, anytime is horrendous. Smith referenced abuse scandals among independent Baptists and others in an article earlier this year, urging leaders to immediately report allegations to authorities and remove the accused from positions of influence while cases undergo investigation. Now, you wouldn't believe which names were included in this list. So, the Jack Hiles son, Jack Hiles son, that's one. And then the other, Jack Hiles was the, the top 14 largest churches in America. He's a champion of the independent fundamental Baptist church movement. His own scandals and incident, where there are rumors about his scandals and incidents, for now, I'm just going to say that that's between uh, the people and the Lord, what they investigate concerning about Hiles. But his son was moved around once he was caught, moved to a different church and then to another church. The other incident was concerning about Jack Hiles' protege who took over his church. Makes you wonder if there's a pattern or a machinery, right? Because family members know what other family members do. Jack Scott, and that's been years ago. That's been famous. He's still in prison, if I recall. Underage minor. Jack Scott, who took over Jack Kyle's ministry. Now that church cut a lot. Now they're not the big name anymore. The big name currently is Paul Chapel with his West Coast Baptist College and Lancaster Baptist Church. But some of you don't know about his brother Mark Chapel. Had a sexual scandal in incident. Rumors say uh, some of them included minors, too. Uh, that's between them and the Lord. But uh, the Mark Chapel incident, that's more of a, a likely thing. And then the third one is, you probably don't know about this, but even in our area, North Valley Baptist Church. From Jack Trever, there was a person, I think his name is Cameron Giovanelli. I think that's his name. But one pastor, independent fundamental Baptist pastor, got so mad that uh, North Valley wasn't really taking action, so then he spoke out. And then finally, uh, the person was finally caught, Cameron Giovanelli, because he was a big faculty uh, player in North Valley Baptist Church nearby here. So that's uh, really bad. That's pretty shameful. So that's the bad thing. Now, after I say all this, all I can say is this, is... All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Look, I'm no better either. I'm no better either. What I want to give you from this lesson, some people might think, oh, Kim, he's just giving something off juicy or something. No, one, we should know about stuff like this. That way we can be more careful and aware. Amen. All right? Especially within the same year, okay? And then the North Valley incident wasn't far away from here. I think it was 2019, okay? So it was 2019 or 18, it wasn't far away. This, we're getting at dangerous times now, okay? So, uh, so the, the second point, the reason why I'm doing this is I want to give something that will encourage people, all right? Because this does happen. Things like this happens in Christian churches, yes, even in Bible-believing churches, and God forbid it's going to happen to our church one day. All right, so then when, when the time comes, which I pray it will never happen, is that one, we should be on guard, okay? We've got to be on guard. So one thing we got to understand is that this flesh is evil and that we have to realize that anyone is capable of this. So we have to take precautionary measures. The first one I want you to turn to is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, please. Please go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, um, there's a video that, uh, you know, I would actually recommend this video. So, uh, the title of the video that I posted is Forbidden, How Do Cre Christians Teach Sex? And that was very important because it showed that, look, there's nothing wrong with sex. But see, that's the thing is that it becomes something very dark and dangerous because the Catholic priests repress themselves for so long and there are too many pressures and burdens in their work. 
That's the thing that happened to these guys, too much attention, see? So they felt that there was too much power, and at the same time, there was too much pressure and burden, and then you can't help yourself, and then what happens? You can't help it. When opportunity knocks, you want to take it. You want to bite the forbidden fruit. All right, let's look at the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, I taught this in that video that, look, uh, people say, well, what's wrong with uh, girls hanging out with uh, guys, teenagers at the middle of midnight and they're underage, etc. Uh, look, man, 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from all appearance of evil. Look at the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. Chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. Remember, testimony is crucial. That's what these pastors thought too. So they thought that, look, uh, it's okay, it's a harmless little thing, but then the appearance gave gives an impression where people are thinking, what are they doing? Yeah. Right? Rumors fly. So it's a bad testimony. So then because of that, that's why the Bible says Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. See, let fornication not even be what? Named among you. So don't let that be attributed. Let's assume Paula White, Benny Hinn, nothing absolutely happened, okay? But guess what? It was named. It hit the news because of something inappropriate. That's why Christians, you have to be careful of that. So that's number one. If you take these precautionary measures, then what's going to happen is then you're further away from something like this happening. Okay? Another thing is, uh, this is what I encourage uh, people to do when they get married. Uh, and I taught this at the video before. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. It is so important. Look, you can't pretend you're holy. You can't pretend that sexual things don't have a hold on you. It does, especially if you're a grown male, okay, with a lot of power and a lot of attention. So it is so important at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and this can happen to women too, okay? So that's why you women have to be careful too. It's not just the men, so I'll include everybody. But it's important that uh, when you look at verse 9, but if they cannot contain, in other words, they cannot remain single, Pure. Let them what? Marry. For it is better to marry than to what? Burn. Burn. All right? Get married. Don't be a Catholic priest all your life. Don't pretend you're holy and that you don't need affection from your wife. And wife, don't pretend that you don't need affection from your husband because verse 5. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinence. That's so important. You need to get together. Basically, that verse is saying that uh, sexually, don't, ref uh, don't refrain from each other. That's defrauding. Why? Because the body is not your own at verse 4. The body belongs to your lover, the spouse. So you need to get together. Amen. So my advice is this, is that if you see your spouse under a stressful situation or you're under stress yourself, I mean, look, your husband and wife, what is it that you both don't know about? It's better that you disclose each other. Now, you don't have to be stupid, but you got to disclose each other uh, rather than the lover catching you at something dark one day. Amen. Okay, Amen. disclose each other. You have to understand each other be gracious to each other. Don't be condemnatory to each other concerning this issue. You have to be understanding. You have to be open. Can't use the busyness excuse. You can't use that, uh, oh, no, I, I don't do stuff like that when you're doing stuff sexually. You got to be open and you got to work out together. Amen. All right? One cannot abuse against the other. That's another thing Amen. because the body's not your own at verse 4. So one spouse should not take dominance against the other spouse. If that's what it does, then guess what? See, you feel so repressed. These people thought they were holy. They repressed. Then they abused other people. But then people who are like, well, you know, I can't repress, so I'm going to abuse my spouse. They go there. And that's dangerous. You have to watch out for that. So... 
Don't let Satan tempt you for your incontinency. That means a lack of pleasure for each other. Don't let Satan tempt you for that one. So you, uh, look, you might think that this is not a big deal, but even in marriage counselings, I did that. Because uh, the reason why I inserted this part of marriage counseling is, look, we got over 50% of divorces in America, and I bet you a huge percentage of them is because they cheated on someone else. All right? There's a good chance of that it cheats on somebody else. And not only that, within every divorce, pr almost, okay, I'm going to not say every, but in a lot of divorces, a spouse will accuse another spouse, why did you look at that person that way? Talk to that person that way. There's always that tension that rises. All right? So it's important that uh, you have to watch your testimony so it doesn't give that, uh, it doesn't give that appearance, wrong impression. Secondly, everything that you have within you sexually should be satisfied with the person God has given to you. <clears throat> now, you know, it's so bad that Brian, I think Brian Houston took this to a such a, higher level that the secular liberal news media shamed him where his wife was talking about basically being a sexy doll for her husband and t giving sexual details on how to perform it. It was so disturbing and disgusting that the liberal news media, they're like, why you do that? You know, that's not a Christian thing. You see that, you know, these people think that they have to go that far in being descriptive. But as you've learned, but as I've taught you before, let it not be once named among you. Amen. That's sexual dark stuff. You know what, what she should have done? She should have shut her mouth and kept it between her and the husband. Why? The marriage bed, look at, uh, I, I, you know, I'm not going to turn there, all right? Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 13, as you already know, the marriage bed is holy, not defiled. But it's kept within only the bed. Not public news for everybody to hear. Amen. My goodness, I don't want to know, man. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. Who wants to know? Maybe one of these weirdos, right? Like we've seen, right? Maybe one of these weirdos might. All right, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. I better wrap this up quickly. First Timothy chapter 5. Now, I'm scared because... So the thing is this, is that uh, things like this, and I'm going to mention this part because people have to understand, and this is apparent to even lost people, sins like this is not something that, oh, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. Justice is going to be served. You can't just overlook the justice and belittle the justice. Justice must be served. The Bible says at uh, verse 20, 1 Timothy 5, 20, Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels. See that? You got to rebuke before everyone so that why? They can fear. Guess what happened? They didn't rebuke before all. The liberal news media did. So the liberal news media rebuked these people before all, uh, making us fear the Lord making us fear these situations. It's sad liberal news media has to teach us that. Not fellow Christians. Not fellow Christians. Look at verse 24, what happens? Some men's sins are what? Open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. That's what happens. Likewise, also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. How about that? These things, are, these are incidents that cannot be hidden and that they are open and that must be rebuked. Now, we believe in uh, taking justice. We believe that uh, things have to be done. So uh, I, I don't know too much about Liberty University's handling or Jack Kyle's church, how they handled with Jack Scott or with Ravi Zacharias' situation. So they all have their deficiencies. Maybe they could have done better. But at least one thing that I give them approval on is they realize that as a church, go to Matthew 18, Matthew 18, that as a church, they had to handle the matter themselves. They have to handle the matter themselves. That way, why? Their testimony doesn't get ruined in front of the whole world. Now, here's something important to understand is that I'm not being like a, a jerk trying to parade about uh, 
If a Bible-believing pastor messes up in something, I'm not the type that's going to parade around about that one. You know why? Because I don't do that with, I mean, look, isn't that a bad thing to do that with, everyone sins in the church. Are you going to parade everybody in the church about everybody sins here in the church? So-and-so did this, so-and-so did that. Come on, man. You don't treat it as that method. Every one of us has sinful issues, right? All of us have sinful issues, and it's not our job to just parade it to everybody. Look, look at Matthew chapter 18, okay? Verse 15. This is not something you parade about. Matthew 18, 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. Then the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. See, it's supposed to go out of pattern here. Okay? It's supposed to go out of pattern that you deal with that person about his or her sinful issue. And this is for any sinful issue you can think about. And then once that's taken care of, then you take it to, if the person still won't listen to you, then you take it to a number of witnesses. Why? Because Paul said at the book of Ephesians, there are sins that uh, is even a shame to even speak about. So then it's got to be done at a pattern in a wise manner. Well, the Bible says you're supposed to rebuke the sin before all. Yeah, because of verse 17, this is where it comes to. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. See that? So then, then you bring it before the whole church if the person still won't listen. And then if the person still won't listen, you got to renounce him and rebuke it before all so that they may learn to fear that this guy, that he's a heathen to us and he's a publican. So that's one. Step number two is, this is we're going by the government system. See that? So a Christian should not be illegal. So if there are illegal means that happens... At least these, some of these organizations at some level, they did a right move by uh, doing the investigation and doing it between themselves and then bringing it up to the legal system. And then by doing it in front of the legal system, eventually what? The whole world heard about that. So, but it's a shame that the liberal news media uh, shames the Christians through that when this could have been solved with Zacharias and other people a long time ago. Why? The organizations defended these people. They didn't side with the victims who told the organization, Zacharias did this to me, but the organization did not listen. Now they have to apologize. Now their testimony is ruined for life, pretty much. See that? There's this, look, I'm not a jerk. There's this one idiot who dubs himself as the new IFB and the leader and the founder. And what he did was he just took every video and wanted to crucify every uh, fellow independent fundamental Baptist pastor like him. And he just made a sensationalized and big news and he's the one that did it. And you know what happened to him at the end? He himself had to eat his own lunch and when one of his own pastors that came from his church was caught in a sexual scandal, he had to publicize that himself. But what was even worse was one of his own children. And I'm not, I don't want to give because I... This is when children are involved, involved and I don't want to do that. But one, one of his own children got involved in the sexual scandal too with a person who's really, uh, this is uh, where people are seeing as minor age level. Son is at a higher age level and this one's like minor level. And I mean like really like, I'm not going to give it. So guess what he did? He brushed it off. So it's not a big deal when he made big emphasis about rebuke before all and I, I don't like these independent fundamental Baptist pastors moving from place to place. But guess what? There were investigators who pointed out that he was moving his son. Just like Jack Kyles was moving his son. So see, you got to be careful. So I look, I understand that. This could happen to the best of us. So I don't parade about this kind of stuff and make it a huge big deal like, oh, this should be sensationalized. No, I'm bringing up the stuff that's already on the news. In the public that everyone should know. So I'm abiding by 1 Timothy 5 where we can learn fear. But before I do this kind of stuff, I take steps. 
And Matthew, and the book of Matthew gave you the right steps to handle it. So one, go by the book of Matthew steps. Second thing, make sure it's legal, all right? Everything is done legally, and you do report when it needs to be uh, reported. The last thing I want to say is this, too, is that a lot of times uh, when sins happen and these uh, public sins happen, it's so important that um, you can't jump the gun and then aside with when there are both sides of an argument going on. Because you got to realize this is that unless there's 100% proof of an incident or a scandal that occurs and the investigation is done and the Lord blesses and honors it, then that's when it takes action. Because there's tons of accusations going out by liberal news media. So Christians, I understand that, okay? I understand Christians that liberal news media, they try to find every scandal and incident and we can't just judge a brother harshly just based on something that's not based on 100% evidence, okay? So I understand that too. I make a big deal about that in church too. And some of you know about that. You can't just go by information unless there is evidence. Otherwise, if the, if the person really didn't commit uh, the crime or the incident, then what happens is then you shame, then you hurt the person, you hurt yourself, and you hurt the people involved, okay? So that's the third rule I want to add. The third rule I want to add is don't get involved if there's something that's not 100% evidence. All right, that's good advice. If you do that, you shame your testimony and you shame yourself in front of the whole world. But that's what that new IFB pastor did. See, he wanted to get involved in everything over there. And then it did turn out that he was true, actually. But you know what? Because he was so giddy to do that, other people who got mad at him, they were giddy to get on his case, too. And he was caught. All right, then. So I hope this lesson, I did go by 1 Timothy 5. I'm not hiding either. Look, this thing has to be publicly said, but I'm taking steps to do this. I go by steps. Now that it's all publicized in front of the world, I'm going by 1 Timothy 5. I rebuke this thing before everybody so that you may learn to fear. Why? It can happen to you.